Good morning. There we go. All right. <laughs> Welcome in the name of the Lord. Uh, as you may have uh, seen in the announcements today, I'm Pastor Joel Hawk. I'm the associate pastor up at Trinity Lutheran Church in Rochester, uh, Minnesota. I believe uh, Pastor Fritch is away in South Dakota being grandpa this uh, week. So uh, uh, we uh, are great, grateful that he's able to get to do that. And we kind of heard through the grapevine of Trinity that he was uh, uh, looking for someone to sub this week. He'd uh, talked to a few people and then we said, well, I can, I can go down and in a way, uh, thank uh, him and thank you for allowing him to uh, serve as the circuit visitor for the past six plus years. Um, I'm also honored and humbled that you all nominated me for that uh, role, the role in which I now uh, serve. I guess it's not technically official until the 1st of September, but Pastor Fritsch uh, handed off the boxes to me already, so I think it, <laughs> I think it works, and, uh, and it's an honor and privilege to be here uh, with you all uh, this morning. Uh, I've been up at uh, Trinity now for, for eight years. I bring you all greetings from the saints of God up there uh, as well. And we're uh, uh, glad to uh, encourage and be with uh, one another in the ministry and in the church of God uh, here in the uh, uh, Olmstead County area. Uh, just a reminder, uh, one thing he wanted me to announce, uh, the guests and members who don't have email are invited to pick up this week's uh, announcements on the purple sheets uh, in the back. Uh, please read those um, in whatever form uh, you receive them. If you want to be added to the email list um, and get those electronically, you can contact uh, the secretary email um, and uh, you'll get on that list. Uh, so at this time, I invite you to stand for the opening hymn, hymn 281, Lord Enthroned in Heavenly Splendor. Please stand. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And so in the confidence that Jesus has come to give us life, let us confess our sins to him. Dearest Jesus, we come before you humbly, confessing our sins of thought, desire, word, and deed, acts which lead only to death. Even our very nature is sinful, and we cannot set ourselves free from this bondage. But in your great mercy, you came into our world, took upon yourself our flesh, and bore in your body the guilt of our sin. You removed it from us and forgave us all our sins. You rescued us from death to life. Grant us your grace always and enable us to live the fullness of your love, now and forever. Amen. Take heart, people of God. Jesus is the bread of life that came down from heaven that a sinner may eat and live. Therefore, hear again this good news to you. I, a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ for the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn, Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens.
The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the word of the Lord. We speak the words of Psalm 34, 12 to 22 responsively as printed for you. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous man can have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. The Lord redeems his servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. The epistle reading is from Ephesians, the fourth and fifth chapters, and it serves as the text for uh, the sermon this morning as Paul encourages us what we are to put off and what we are to put on as the children of God in Christ. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking, They are darkened in the understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with this truth that is in Jesus." You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all one members, members of one body. In your anger, do not sin, Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus declared, 
I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. At this the Jews began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And this bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus.
Dear fellow saints of God in Christ Jesus, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We heard this week in our gospel reading, and you heard uh, last week from Pastor Fritsch uh, proclaiming to you about how Jesus provides not only our daily basic needs like daily bread, but how even more he is uh, bread from heaven, given as a gift for our eternal life. Uh, But the word I'd like to proclaim to you today comes from the epistle reading in Ephesians, uh, where we get a different image, but still from our daily life, to speak to us about our daily walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the beginning of the reading from Ephesians, which is uh, printed for you in the bulletins, Paul catalogs a state of mind towards God in those who are without Christ. Their thinking is futile. They're darkened in their understanding. They give themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with continual lust for more. But then Paul encourages the Ephesians You didn't come to know Christ that way. You were taught to put off your old self and to put on the new self. And with those images, he's talking about something we do every single day. He's just talking about getting dressed. Now in the scriptures, getting dressed is first of all the imagery of our baptism. We all need to confess with the prophet Isaiah In Isaiah 64, we have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. Yes, we're born cute and cuddly on the outside, aren't we? But we inherit an inner spiritual coat of rags. By nature, we get used to that garment, Like it said at the beginning of our text, our hearts and minds are naturally darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God. Things that look wise and beneficial to our natural mind are really empty and meaningless when it comes to restoring our relationship with God and and walking in that relationship throughout our lives. We can even become so hard and callous as to no longer even desire a relationship with our Creator. We can turn from God so zealously that we begin to call evil good and good evil, and we see that in the world around us, but the scriptures invite us to look at our own hearts and our own minds to see when we might do that, when we might rebel or revel in our rebellion as sticking it to the man upstairs, or we might be unconcerned about the eternity that may await us if God lets us continue to live in such darkness. Certainly in our American context, we see and we have participated in, haven't we, the continual lust for more, more and more uh, that St. Paul describes. We desire more of what goes against God and his word. We'll even desire the stuff of this life, stuff that's good gifts from God, the things that that give us our daily bread, the, the good things that fill our lives with blessings from the Creator here. But if we desire that, if we lust after it, to use the words of our text, as, as, and if we desire it as if our happiness and satisfaction come totally from those gifts and not from the giver, we know we're still putting on the old sinful flesh within us. And we all have that within us. Yes, the the people out there who have no knowledge of Christ have that, but even you and and me here today have that, that old person within us. But the good news is that in Christ and in your baptism into him, you have put on Christ. You are sons and daughters of God through faith. Your relationship with Christ has been restored you now wear a robe of righteousness made white in the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. He shed his blood for you on the cross. In Revelation 7, John receives a vision of all those who are around the throne, all those who have uh, rejoiced eternally in their faith in Jesus, and they're wearing these white robes of righteousness, white robes washed in the blood of the Lamb that he has given them to wear not only in time but for eternity. And thus you and me as God's people have been made new in the attitude of our minds also. You and I have been enlightened by God's Holy Spirit and the scriptures to know and to love 
the will of God. Not just to know it with head knowledge, but to desire it in our hearts, something worked in us by the Holy Spirit. You and I have been reconciled to God by the death of his son, Jesus. You will be saved eternally by his life, which he gives to you as the bread that came down from heaven, as he said to us in John. Now that wisdom, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of his word, sometimes looks like foolishness to the world around us, doesn't it? But you and I know it leads on the path of life from God. And so as God's people, we become open to God leading us. We don't lust for more, as St. Paul said, but we long for nothing more than to know God's heart and to share in his heart and in his mind. That's our continual desire as his people, those who have put on Christ in our baptism. You and I are more interested in truth, truth from God, truth about right and wrong, truth about evil and good. We're more interested in that truth than what feels good or what might make me happy for a moment. We're willing to call evil, evil, but also to call good, good. Not on the basis of our feelings, not on the basis of our culture around us, but on the basis of God's word. Now this salvation, this new heart, this new mind that God has given you and me in Christ are God's gifts to you and me in Jesus through his spirit. He gave them first to you in your baptism. And for for some of you, it was here in this congregation that he did that. He renews them in you by his word, by the absolution, the forgiveness of your sins, by the Lord's Supper that you receive at this rail. In that act of baptism, the Holy Spirit sealed you for the day of redemption as it said in our text. He sealed you to be one raised from the dead, to live with God from, uh, forever. Jesus put it this way in our gospel uh, reading. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, and I will raise those who believe in me up at the last day. That's the end. That's the goal of our faith. So non-Christians, those around us who haven't put on Christ, who haven't been gifted with the Holy Spirit, they can't think this way. They're not able to because they haven't been enlightened by the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't expect the culture around us to understand God's word, to believe it to be true, not just for me, but for all people. We shouldn't expect them to understand and know the wisdom from God because they haven't seen that and known it and haven't had it put on them by the Holy Spirit in Christ. And so God's word today brings us to this sobering reality. St. Paul is writing to a church today. He's writing to the church of God at Ephesus, the saints of God, those who have put on Christ. But he's reminding them, you have to ever be on your guard. You can't just grow complacent and think you've got it made, if you will that you and I also have to constantly allow Christ and his spirit to lead our hearts and minds, to give us the wisdom from on high, to, to constantly humble ourselves under the word of God so that we might receive the truth of everlasting life daily. We need to pray constantly for Christ and his spirit to keep us from falling prey to the old way of thinking, the way of thinking of the world around us, the way of thinking that could still lead us away from God, that could, if we let it, continue to lead us away from the church, away from the fellowship of believers that we enjoy and experience right now. The commands of God in this portion of Ephesians all emphasize the way that that evil thoughts and evil words and evil deeds can divide us from one another. St. Paul said, Therefore each of you must put put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. Lying and falsehood don't allow for unity of heart and mind, do they? They lead us to conceal true thoughts and words, and we learn to distrust those who are around us. He goes on, In your anger, do not sin. Don't let the sun go down while you are angry. Don't give the devil a foothold. If we let anger fester within us, it can very easily lead us to sin against one another, can't it? Satan uses it as a wedge between us, between parents and children, between fellow church members, between husband and wife, between uh, co-workers, between a worker and their, their boss. Anger and frustration can lead to division very easily. 
St. Paul goes on, he who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Very often, stealing comes from selfishness. But our posture as Christians, as God's people, that should be one of sacrificial giving, of giving of ourselves for and to one another, and of the goods that God has given us that all may share in the blessings of rejoicing with God. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Dirty jokes and gossip and even the truth that casts a negative light on someone have no place among Christians. We have to use our speech to build each other up and give grace and blessing and encouragement. Our words can do so much good as we encourage one another, as we build each other up, as we say, hey, good job, as we maybe ask them, hey, what's going on? How can I help you in this moment and in this time? How can I be a blessing to you and speak the good news of Jesus to you that you might trust and believe, that you might have hope that what you're going through is not the final word from God, it's not the final experience of your life, but God has good news for you as he's given it to me. In that way, we can live in the unity of the Spirit with one another and continue to live as those who have put on Christ in our baptism. And so it's like Paul shows us two wardrobes or two closets, if you will, today. You see, the truth is we can't go around naked, <laughs> that is neutral in our hearts and minds and lives, our philosophies or our actions. In any and every situation, our actions, our words flow from a way of thinking within us. We're always putting on some sort of action. We're either pulling out the old self, the old rags, the polluted garment that we have by nature, or we're reaching into the other wardrobe, the other closet, and pulling out the robe of righteousness that Christ has given us, that covers our sins, that covers the old rags we have on within us, and then empowers us and allows us to follow in God's will and in His way, to follow and be led by the Word of God. Each day, each hour, each minute, we're, we're reaching into a wardrobe and we're pulling out the rags of sin, or we're pulling out the righteousness given us by Jesus Christ. When my children, my three boys, eight and six and three, when they act up or really get on my nerves, I reach into the wardrobe and I can put on anger or I can put on the love of Christ and the patience of the Holy Spirit. When my boss asks how the project's going and I haven't been quite as diligent as I should have been, I reach into the wardrobe and I can put on lies and excuses. Or in Christ, I can put on truth and honesty, whatever the consequences might be. When a brother or sister in Christ has hurt me or acted sinfully, I reach into a wardrobe. I can put on gossip and slander and bitterness and resentment. Or I can put on Christ and approach them privately in hopes of reconciling them to me and to God and in seeking in love a way forward together in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace and the hope and forgiveness that we all share at the foot of the cross in Jesus, our Savior. This is a daily return to God's action first and foremost for us in baptism. The old self that old closet, that old wardrobe must be put off daily. It must be closed off, shut up daily, hourly with its sins and its evil desires. And the new self must be put on daily. We must reach in again and again, reaching, the forgiveness, reaching for the forgiveness of Christ, reaching for the Holy Spirit to come and clothe us with humility and compassion and love and tenderness and kindness towards one another. This is our high and our holy calling from God as brothers and sisters in Christ, to be kind to one another, to be compassionate to one another, to forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave you. To understand 
in our hearts the forgiveness of Jesus, to let it be put on us and put over us daily, to put on love for each other and our neighbors in all circumstances. Like children imitate parents, Paul encourages us, be imitators of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children, we are dearly loved children of God. He loves you and me with everlasting love. He desires you and me to come to a knowledge of the saving truth. He desires everyone out there to come to that same saving knowledge too, that they too might be raised up by Jesus to eternal life at the last day. He desires that they know the true bread from heaven that has come down to give life to the world. And he calls those things, that love and compassion, that mercy and grace, that truthfulness and trustworthiness that our Heavenly Father has. He desires to put them on you and me as well. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God, we have the robe of sacrifice the robe of sacrificial, self-giving love put on us daily by Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if it all sounds a bit daunting, (laughs) it is on our own. It would be a hopeless calling, a calling from which we might run if we seek even our salvation and security in the way we've chosen the correct wardrobe, the correct robe every day we'd still be without hope. We know how often ourselves we reached in to the wrong wardrobe and put on the rags of sin, don't we? As we confess in the, the small catechism, we daily sin much and still deserve nothing but God's wrath. And so we reach in further. We reach into the other wardrobe to take hold of the robes that maybe we can't always see, the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all our sin. It covers us, even those those sins we've committed daily after our conversion to Christ. We have the full and total trust. The Spirit has signed and sealed us for the day of redemption. We seek not to grieve Him. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You were sealed. That is a truthful and trustworthy promise from God. You await the full delivery of that robe when Christ returns You wait for that robe to be washed once and for all and shown to you and to all the world to be spotlessly clean like it truly is already for you. The good news for you and me is not that that we are so tender-hearted, not that we are so forgiving, but that God in Christ forgave you, that he is tender-hearted and compassionate for you, that when we hold grudges, he does not. Just as your parents loved you even before they met you, Your heavenly Father chose you and made you his own child before you and I even wanted to be part of his family, even before you and I heard of Christ. Christ gave himself up for you, even as Paul says, when you and I were dead in sin and lived with darkened hearts and minds, he came from heaven to be the light of the world, to enlighten us by his mercy and his grace and to give us new lives, new hearts, new minds, a new wardrobe to put on as his people. And so we rejoice. This is a joyful thing that we get to share. The next uh, convention next summer in our synod's uh, body is uh, under the theme, Joyfully Lutheran. We get to be joyful as we go about our Father's business. We get to be joyful as we go about our daily lives in the power of the Holy Spirit We gladly pull out that that new wardrobe, that new robe we've been given. This new life in Christ is a lavish gift of your heavenly Father. And because they're a gift, you don't have to worry about other people getting them dirty. In fact, this new wardrobe compels us and drives us to do the hard and dirty work of love, of truth-telling and forgiveness. It leads to sacrificial service and sharing. We wear our pure white robes out into the still dark world so that they too may see and know the light and love of Jesus and the new wardrobe that's available to them too through his death and his resurrection, open and available to all. In Christ, you know and have received God's love. In Jesus, you have received forgiveness and reconciliation with the Father. 
He has cast off. He has put off the old corrupt self from you. He has put on his robe of righteousness. You now know you have a right relationship with God and you're empowered to walk in that relationship every day in Christ. And so my encouragement for you this week, as you get up for the day, as you put on the clothes that you're going to wear around the house, at work, wherever you go, as you put on those clothes, remember to put on Christ. Remember the robe of righteousness that he has put on you, the robe of forgiveness that you walk in every day and to put on love and compassion and forgiveness towards those around you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that is far greater than all human understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ your Lord. Amen. This time we uh, gather our offerings uh, before the Lord and uh, take the opportunity also, if you haven't already, to sign the friendship registers uh, that you can find uh, in the pews uh, next to you. Our prayers uh, this morning, uh, we remember uh, many for whom uh, you have been praying um, in recent uh, weeks, uh, but we also um, uh, received word and heard that uh, our br- the brother in Christ, uh, Morris Sin, uh, has fallen asleep in Jesus uh, this morning to await the resurrection of all flesh. Uh, we pray for uh, his family as they grieve. Uh, arrangements uh, are still uh, pending at this time, uh, but uh, we trust and hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus, uh, who is the life of the world, not only for this life, but for eternity. Uh, Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God the Almighty Father gather and guide it so that we may worship him in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all the nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church to persevere in faith, proclaim your word, and bring salvation to people everywhere. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to receive the truth of the gospel. Cause them to turn from their wayward ways and follow Jesus, their shepherd. Help us, your church, to grow in love for you and for one another so that we become more perfect witnesses of your love for all people. Let us pray for our pastors and teachers and all the leaders of the church and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold all who serve you and your people. Keep them in health and safety. Empower all your people to fend off the temptations of Satan and fix our eyes upon you so that we may faithfully accomplish the work you have called us to do. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God guide their minds and hearts so that all of us may live in true peace and freedom. Almighty and eternal God, Graciously direct those who have been set in positions of authority among us so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. Let us pray that God, the merciful and compassionate Father, heal the sick, comfort the dying and distressed, and grant blessing to all who are in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and courage to those who have lost heart. In your mercy, hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the resurrection and the life. We trust that those who die in you uh, do not die eternally, but await the resurrection of all flesh and are constantly in your presence. We thank you that uh, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for the family of Morris Sin this morning who fell asleep in Jesus. Uh, Comfort them, uh, wrap them with the arms of your mercy and love, and may they trust and lean on you for all things in this time. 
We pray for healing and strengthening of body and spirit for Kathy Tordson and Nancy Henke. We lift up before you, O Lord, those who are dealing with cancer, that your grace would sustain them, and that the good Lord, uh, that you, O Lord, would work through medicines and medical professionals uh, to heal and to give strength and relief uh, to those who suffer from cancer and other diseases. We especially lift up before you today Glenn Fine, Mike Fine, Lyndon Luke, Adelia Norgrant, and so many others that we know and name in our hearts. Lord, we lift up, lift up before you those who are receiving hospice care. Fill them with your hope and comfort them with your presence. Give them peace and a renewed joy in drawing near to your uh, more closer presence in heaven. We pray for Walter Bannett, Otto Kitzman, Gertrude Holzerland, and Norm Schultz. Lord, uh, prepare us to fall asleep in faith and on the last day receive the crown of life promised to all your saints. Lord, we also give thanks for the common work uh, of the uh, Rochester Circuit, uh, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. We thank you for the work of Pablo, for the work of UMR, and for so many other ministries that uh, the people of God in, in this place, in Rochester and Stewartville and this region, uh, share. We thank you that the gospel is proclaimed in these places, and we pray that all who need to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus, uh, would hear it with open ears and receptive hearts. Lord, in your mercy, we pray all these things, and we come together and say, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Once again, thank you for the privilege of sharing God's Word with you this morning. Uh, we are going to uh, have Bible study, uh, education hour uh, downstairs uh, in a few minutes, so I hope you uh, join, uh, join me for that downstairs. God's blessings on your week.